Good evening, everyone. Welcome this Wednesday night with the sunshine still out. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've been enjoying the sunshine lately. I've been sweating a little bit as I walk on my lunches, but that's okay. I enjoy the sunshine and the warmness and seeing all the creatures running around the campus and including the students <laughs> because some of those are creature-like. But um, I hope everybody's had a good week so far. We're going to start tonight with a familiar song, I Am Resolved, and one that I think is going to kind of bring a little bit of energy to the service tonight. So we're going to sing that one. If you are able to stand, please stand with me. We'll sing I Am Resolved. We'll sing all four verses. as we begin our service tonight. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and for your blessings, and thank you for, again, another opportunity to be here. We pray that you will bless our time, Lord, as we um, come to take a reprieve from our daily cares and, Lord, from our jobs, and, Lord, to gather together with your assembly tonight. I pray that you will just, uh, Lord, give us some comfort and strength and some truth from your word. I pray that you will help us, Lord, to just do our best for you this evening. And, Lord, that your honor uh, will bring honor and glory to your name. And, Lord, thank you for your goodness to us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. So for our announcements tonight, um, our Macedonia Youth Meeting is going to be in Georgia coming up this Saturday. Um, that is the 22nd, we're leaving the church here at 7.30 a.m. Um, that is primarily for the youth, um, but I guess if anyone is interested in going, uh, we'll be here at 7.30 to leave again this Saturday morning. And there will be a farewell fellowship for the Faulkners um, before they move to Hawaii that's coming up on this Sunday. It will be after the morning service. The church is going to provide hamburgers and hot dogs. And um, if you, uh, the church is asked to bring desserts and sides, and there's one other thing that I, drinks, that's it. Desserts, sides, and drinks. So if anyone um, was able to assist with that. Also this Sunday is children's change offering. So be sure that you have your change for that. And um, 
Then Sunday evening, we'll be over at Brandon Baptist. So it's going to be a full day coming up this Sunday. Uh, for the choir, we will be singing over there as well. There'll be a couple of specials. And for those who are singing specials, you have been notified about that um, through the coming months. So that's all the announcements I have. Uh, we're going to have a time of fellowship. And if you do have an offering, I said the word receptacles on Sunday, and I don't think that went over too well. <laughs> I don't think the preacher liked that too well. So we have four boxes. And then we also have the plates up here if you do have an offering that you would like to put in tonight. Um, so we'll do that right here after this next song. We're going to sing number 475, Rejoice in the Lord. It's a little bit slower song, but I, it's been a while since we have sang that one. And I like the first verse of it. It says, God never moves without purpose or plan when trying his servant and molding a man. Give thanks to the Lord, though your testing seems long. In darkness he giveth a song. And so you may remain seated tonight as we sing this one. Again, rejoice in the Lord. We'll sing all three verses. this time, uh, shake hands, have fellowship, and welcome everyone to the service tonight.
right, for our last song this evening, this is appropriately titled The Bible Stands, so we're going to stand as we sing it. Uh, so we're going to sing all four verses, 292, The Bible Stands. <laughs> Thank you, Jason, and musicians tonight, and um, hope you're excited about what God is going to do and doing, and uh, we excited about uh, the Lord, and I hope you love the Bible. The Bible stands, though the earth may crumble and everything else falls away, and uh, men have tried to destroy it, and people have said that they would get rid of the Bible, and I think Voltaire, some French guy, he said, uh, some guy over there in Europe said that he would destroy the Bible. And uh, places that uh, publishers and people who have tried to destroy the Bible today are places where they print Bibles. Isn't that wonderful how God does? And uh, you, you, one thing for sure, you can be rest assured the Bible tells us this, uh, that be not deceived, God is not mocked. And uh, I tell the story all the time of the Brazilian president that was elected in 1984, the year we went to Brazil. And uh, he made the statement, and uh, he said that not even God could stop him now. And uh, the night before his inauguration, he went to the hospital with a stomach virus or a bug or something like that, never made it out of the hospital, died. <laughs> he was going to be there salvation. I mean, his name was Tancredo Neves. And, uh, boy, they, he just thought he was going to have it all. But you, you, don't, you don't mock God and mock his Bible. It, it always stands. And uh, forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. All right, uh, we're going to say this too. You know, Sunday, I'll just reemphasize what uh, Jason has already said, that we'll be taking up a love offering also for Michael and Dorothy. Like I said, some year, a couple of years ago, when Nathan and Talitha left here to go to uh, Charleston, Nathan said it's the only church he's ever seen to pay people to leave. And so uh, we're going to take up an offering. Michael, he did such work around here, a lot of work and everything when we first got this building 10 years ago. And uh, Michael, he cut all the grass and uh, did, a lot, did a lot of work, spent his own gas money and all that. And we just want to show him our appreciation. So I hope you'll 
dig deep. Now, a lot of times I go over here to a certain place at uh, Pittman sometime to get some supplies for the church. If it's wood flooring, if it's uh, whatever, whatever I get, doors or whatever. And uh, uh, William, William over there, he's, he, he runs the place. And uh, William, he, uh, every time I walk in, I say, now, William, it's for the church. Sharpen your pencil. And that means give us a good price. Sharpen your pencil. And because uh, they got prices all over there, and I never offer them that, that one price. And, uh, and, and, and he always doubles it whenever I walk in. Me or Larry, we walk in, and he always doubles it. So whenever I want to get a good offering or something like that, I, say, don't, I don't say sharpen your pencil. Get it as dull as you can and make it as big as you can to print and all that. So we hope we'll get a good offering for Michael and Dorothy, and uh, they'll be leaving. He, he didn't want all this stuff. He didn't want all this uh, recognition and all, but I'm going to miss him. I really am. Uh, down through the years uh, that he's been here, uh, we've been fishing partners. When I'm not fishing with Larry, we'd fish. One of the biggest fish I ever caught in my life was down at Fripp Island on no, uh, Thanksgiving one year, and Michael had his boat down there. We went out and uh, caught some boat, or caught some, yeah, we caught some boats too, but uh, we did do that. But uh, I caught a big red. It was about a 30-pound red out in, the, out in the bay that night between Fripp Island and uh, Hunting Island, and I caught a big 30-pound red. That was, that was a nice fish, and I showed some of the people here the big fish that Michael caught that time, a bass, was fishing down here at Hartwell. And the bass he caught was smaller than his plug. I'm serious. I still got a picture of that one on my phone. And I keep that in hunting all the time. We, we've hunted. Me and him and Nathan had a property over in Union, a little farm that we leased from this lady. And uh, we, we hunted a lot over there. So we've had a lot of good times together. And I'm going to miss him. But I can't bring him back. But I can go where he is. <laughs> I can go to Hawaii and visit him every once in a while. And so we'll, we'll try that. We'll see if he's got us a good place. I'm going to wait until he gets settled in real good, and then, I, and then I'll go over there. And then we will say this for the ladies, that ladies' restroom back there. Everything's about ready for it. There might be just a few more uh, little details to do, and, uh, but it's look, it looks good in there. Brand new floor, brand, brand new walls, doors, and even the wheelchair does fit in there. And uh, just a few things that we'll fix up for the handicap, but I uh, hope you get to uh, go back there and enjoy your bathroom now. And uh, I'm going I'm to quit going in there, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop doing that. Then also, they were down here uh, yesterday and today, and they've almost got our air hooked up down here in the building, one of them, one of the units. And I said, man, we'll get to use it Sunday. Then I realized it's only going to be 66 degrees on Sunday. <laughs> we're just hoping the doors have our own air condition. And, uh, but they almost got it, and then over here on this side, they're working on it today. Uh, this unit over here hasn't, hasn't been heating up, and so Travis was over here today working on it. So we're, we're looking for that, okay? And I got a lot of things still going on, and praying for it. We'll go to this. If you get this old one again, and I want you to look at that one again, the one that's on the uh, landscape top, top paper. If you'll look at that, and if there's anything on there you can see that we need to take off. We took off number 27, number 37, number 42, number 45. We took those off. And uh, so if you see anything on there that maybe you put some time ago, because it's been a while since I've got one of these from Miss Tina, and I want to get it updated and uh, get some new ones in here uh, the month of May, and then we'll go with that. So anybody see anything on there that we could take off on that one? Or, and then, and then we'll take, and if you take the other, if you don't see anything, I'm being ready to him. If you will take the other spare, uh, the special prayer, if you'll look at it, and uh, we'll go with it right quick. And uh, I got some down here, uh, number 22. Uh, we got Walter Loving, surgery went well. He's still in the hospital with IV. And uh, we was over there today, Janice and I was over there today, and uh, he looks very, very, very weak. I'm talking about very weak. And I don't know if it's medication they got him on, but uh, he, had, he did go down for two hours this morning and do uh, uh, dialysis, so that takes a lot of strength out of him. So let's do remember him. His left arm is really, really swollen up. And uh, so do pray for him, okay, that the Lord will help him get his strength back up. And hopefully once they get all the infection cleared up, they'll let him come home. So do pray for them. Then Ryan Gray, last week I mentioned on the other sheet about asking Joanna if I need to take his name off. And uh, she said, no, leave it on there. Well, he called me this morning and thanked me for that. 
because at work at BMW, they, uh, he's got an interview this coming Friday with HR about a day shift job, five days a week. So uh, that on shift A, whatever that is, I know uh, Brother Doug knows what shift A or shift B is. And uh, so they, they, they do pray for him, and they've asked us to continue to pray for that. And then the revival at Brandon Baptist next week, Lord will help us there. And then Tabernacle voting on a new pastor in a couple of weeks. They, uh, this past Sunday, the pulpit committee talked to the church, and I saw Dr. Aiken over at, uh, over at Gus, as me and Larry did, and they said that they're going to vote on Brother Scott Settle in about two weeks. I think they got to give a two-week notice for the Constitution, and Brother Scott Settle has been the one that I thought should be the first one to, uh, that they would try to put before the church, and uh, he's filled in ever since Brother Logan's been gone and uh, done a great job filling in, so let's, let's do remember him, if you would. And then Brother Jerry Yates, he sent some of us a text message about Hilla, and I, I think you spell it H-I-L-L-I-A, but it's pronounced Hilla, and that's Jerry's sister. She uh, had aneurysm in the back of her neck, and I, he didn't say anything about her tonight when he came in, and I uh, do remember her, and he did say that she is not saved, so let's do remember her, put that down if you would, Brother Jerry's sister, and uh, so the Lord help her on that. Anyone else got anything special tonight on this one, on this one here? Which one's that, Sam? Okay. All right. Take number 11 off. Anything else can change on that. Anything you need to add to it. Praying for these ladies are expecting for Amber and also, yes, ma'am, Christy. You got to raise that big. I'm, I'm, a, I'm up here. I'm, I'm two miles away from y'all. What you got? What day is that? June 2nd. June 2nd. All right, let's remember her. This will be what? Four? The fourth one? Okay, all right. So let's do remember her that they can get all that taken care of. Brother Bill? Lucas? Luke. Luke. All right. Just remember. I think I heard that on the news. I think I did. I heard about a motorcycle wreck. But I don't know if that's the same one or not. So, anyone else? Miss Shirley? Okay. Is that is that the ones on number two here? Yes. Okay. So let's remember her, Jean Collins, Shirley's sister. Let's remember that. Anyone else? Hey, this is time of prayer, right? And that's what we want to do. We really do want to pray for people. And I, I do believe prayer changes things. And like I said, uh, PhD, you know, if you want to get a PhD, I think everybody can have it. Prayers, high dynamics. And I believe we can all have that and come to the place that God would have us to be. Anyone else? Anyone else? If you would, open your Bibles in Acts, if you would. Chapter number, we'll start in chapter number 16 tonight. We've been talking about prayer for guidance. It's, we're talking about the early church in prayer, the early church in prayer. I did see all the people over at, uh, over at Brandon. They, they, they have their midweek prayer meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning, but this coming week they're going to have it at 7. And I uh, did see them all over. They always go to the to the bay, Silver Bay, and get them something to eat. And I saw him over there, and the guy who does the sound booth, he, he, now like I said, he's probably the youngest guy, him and his wife, probably the younger, one of the younger couples in the church. And uh, they're my age, because <laughs> me and him went to school together, and uh, his wife lived across the creek from us whenever I was growing up, so she knows the 
bad side of me. She knows the bad side of me. Her, I mean, she, I mean, she was right across the creek, and her family wouldn't even have anything to do with me and uh, what I did. But uh, I just told them today, I said, the grace of God is sufficient, isn't it? It's real. And what did it do and how did it change hearts? But I asked Alan, I said, you going you gonna to be in the sound booth? He said, yeah. I said, now don't cut me off if you get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cut me off if you get mad at me. We're looking forward to it. They are. They're excited about it. And uh, I, I, one, one of the ladies yesterday, I saw one of the ladies yesterday, and uh, she said, how good is y'all's choir? I said, you ever heard Hooterville Band? We're a little bit better. <laughs> how many people know who the Hooterville Band is? <laughs> <laughs> on Petticoat Junction, you know, Mayberry Band. I said, we're a little bit better. We're a little bit better than that. And so uh, they're, they're, they're excited about it. And then some of my old friends from Brandon, they put on Facebook that I'm a Brandon native. I'm a Brandon native, and I'll be preaching over there. So I don't know what, I don't know what tribe I'm from in Brandon. <laughs> I really don't. I'm on the bad side of the creek. <laughs> so they put on there, and one of the funny things I thought was unique, is they, they put on there, you know, that I'll be preaching Sunday morning, Sunday night, went th Monday through Wednesday. And then under that, instead of saying specials, it said entertainment. <laughs> entertainment. Zion Hill Baptist College. I mean, Y'all need to go entertain. <laughs> That's what they put instead of specials, have entertainment on there. So we'll go over there and entertain a little bit, okay? All right, Acts chapter number 16. Acts chapter number 16. And all the way through here, we, we've been picking several different things. We're talking about the early church and prayer. And number one, we talked about prayer for guidance. Then we talked about prayer for power. Now, I'll be honest. I don't know how you felt, but Sunday morning here at church, I had a good time. I, I felt the Lord moving hearts, and uh, I, I saw several people, you know, emotionally moved Sunday morning, and God gave me that message on the church and what God has done and what God can do. And I had, I had a, a good liberty preaching Sunday mornings, but that's what we do. We pray for things like that for liberty. And then we talked about the prayer of leaders. We, we, we mentioned that and how we as leaders pray for our church and pray for our people. And then we talked about the prayer of dedication. And, and we do. We, we need to dedicate our lives to the Lord. And I believe we, each one of us, should pray uh, along the way. And then last week we talked about, in Acts chapter 12, intercessory prayer the prayer of intercession. In other words, we can all pray one for another, and that's what Paul and Peter and all here in the book of Acts, that's what they're laying out for us, the ones that in Luke, whenever he wrote it, he's laying out these things. And uh, we talked about the uh, missionaries, we talked about pastors and all. How many times have you ever talked to someone? Seriously, now, you don't you think about this for a minute. How many times have you ever talked to someone and asked them where they go to church? Sometimes they'll say, yeah, we go down the road here. What's the name of your church? Ah, you ever, you ever talked to anybody like that? They say they go to church, but they don't know what the name of the church is. If they can find out the name of the church, you know what they'll say? Who's the pastor? Ah, man, I, you know, get to know. <laughs> and I think that's what, that's what we got to do when we pray for people intercessive. If you learn to pray for people, you get to know them. You really do. And uh, you, you get a burden on your heart. And I've told this story time and time again. My pastor, when he was down in Tampa, Florida, before he got called up here to pastor our church, there's another man came to his church named Jack. And he, he's made this statement our pastor had. He said whenever Jack came to the church, his, his attitude and, uh, and, and his, this way he carried himself, he said, I didn't like him. I didn't like him. He was the most least liked person in my in my book, in our church. I didn't like him. And he said, our pastor preached a message one time on getting to know people, praying for people, and stuff like that. And he said, so I, I took the challenge, and I started praying for Jack. Now, Jack was a preacher, too. Jack. And uh, he's pastored several different churches, I think, down in Georgia, southern Georgia. And over here, I, he supported me over in uh, Laurenburg, North Carolina. I went over there several times when he pastored over there. And, uh, in fact, he, uh, he worked in the lab at the mill over here at Brandon Mill before they closed it all down. Whenever Janice and I, after we got married, she worked in the lab at the mill, at the cotton mill over there at Brandon Rayon, what we call the big mill. And uh, she, she worked there, and Jack, he worked there too. And uh, he was over the, uh, the lab there with the mill. And uh, he helped Janice a lot of ways. He would talk to her, and he helped us, and did a lot of things. But that's what my pastor said. He said, I got to praying for the guy, 
And he said, I got to liking him. And he said, and all of a sudden, we became visitation partners. He said, Will's out knocking on doors all the time. And they became best of friends. And then whenever he had to leave a church down in Georgia, he came and joined our church. And that's when he was over at Brandon Rayon Plant and uh, uh, working over there. And then he started pastoring over in Lawrenburg, North Carolina. So if you get to know them, that's what we do to do. And, uh, and, and, and if we pray for them, I believe God might put something on my heart. But I just don't like that person. I, I just don't like him or her or them or whatever. Why don't, why don't we just learn to pray for them a little bit and see how God would do. Acts chapter 16, here's what we're going to look at tonight just for a couple of minutes. In Acts chapter 16, and I prayed that we prayed this prayer, and when we talked about the power of prayer, or prayer for power, that whenever Peter was locked up in prison, or they told him not to uh, preach no more in Jesus' name, and they were praying for him, they didn't pray, and the disciples were, it didn't, or they didn't get a lot of it. They got beaten and everything, and they come back out. And they didn't pray for deliverance then, but they prayed for power, and they prayed for liberty to preach the word of God. So I said, sometimes we don't pray for that. Then there's times that we do pray for deliverance. You know there's times that Jesus Christ himself, that whenever he was in a certain situation, he slipped out because they wanted to kill him. He slipped out. Paul had to slip out. They'd let Paul down over a basket, a wall in a basket and everything. There's times we've got to pray for deliverance. And so chapter 16, verse number 25 says this, this here. Let me go back to chapter 16. I'm in chapter number 20 there, somewhere along the way. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Now, we know all this story here. But what led up to that story? What led up to it? And uh, if you go back to uh, chapter 16, we'll stay there in verse number 16. Now, I, I preach a message here in, in chapter number 16, and I call it Macedonia Miracles. Because this is where Paul went over, heard the, heard the call, let's go over to Macedonia and help them. Come over to Macedonia and help us. And there's a lot of things here. Number one, you got placement miracles. If you look in verse number six and seven, they wanted to go to certain places, but the Spirit didn't allow them to go. So you got placement miracles. God will put you in the right place if you'll pray. You know what? God will put you with the right spouse if you'll pray. How many times have young girls or boys... We had a young couple here in the church, and whenever they came to me, this was years ago, 20-something years ago, and whenever they came here, and they wanted to get married. Now, they grew up together in this church, wanted to get married. And I said, y'all sure? Yep, yep. Well, about two years into it, they didn't want to be married anymore. And I talked to the guy. I said, what's going on? He said, well, you told us we needed to pray, but I reckon I didn't pray hard enough. I said, it's too late now. You say, well, it wasn't God's will. Yeah, when you said I do, you made it God's will. You understand? <laughs> when you said I do, you made it God's will. And you, you took everybody else out of the question. So I'm just saying there's placement miracles. We go on down. There's personal miracles. There's preservation miracles. There's a lot of things down to here. Verse number 16, when he came down there, it says, And it came to pass as we went to prayer, certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul, and, and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now, let me tell you something. Sometimes the devil might even say something good about you. And just because somebody says something good about you, that doesn't mean you're good. And that doesn't mean you follow that voice. When I, when I was praying about taking Zion Hill Baptist Church, there's one person came to me and said, We need you here. And they don't need you on the mission field. You better off served here. No, I'm better off served wherever God puts me. It is not your. And I couldn't let that one person there saying that say, "Oh, well, this is God's will." So I mean, it could have been the devil talking to me. You ever know that we got sometimes you got devils in the church. Verse number eighteen. And this she did many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, "I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her." And he came out same hour, and when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas, drew them into the marketplace, unto the rulers, and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together, uh, <clears throat> together against them, 
And the magistrates went off their, ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep this, them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stock. Boy, he put them in there good, didn't he? You know, we use that term a lot. Man, if he ever gets caught, they're going to throw him up under the jail and throw the key away. Well, that's what happened to Paul and Silas here. They threw them under the jail and threw the key away. Have you ever heard that term? Yeah, we've used it all the time. Man, if, if I could, I'd throw him under the jail and I'd throw the key away. Well, that's what happened to them. But, you know what happened there? They, they began to look verse number 25, and it bid not Paul and Silas prayed. You see, there's a prayer. Now, they didn't specifically pray for deliverance. They just prayed and said, Lord, thank you for the blessing of being in prison. And then all of a sudden, there you go. There you go. Whenever they come to this place in their life, they begin to pray, they begin to sing praises, and to do the things that God would have them to do. Now, I hope we'll see something right here. I got something very simple, very simple. Look in Psalm number 22, if you would. In Psalm number 22. Now, how many people know math here? You know math? You know good math? Can you count one to a hundred? Don't you love it when little children come in and say, I can count to a hundred. And you've got to sit there and listen to a count to a hundred. They mess up a couple of times and they start all over. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? All right, here we are. Here we are. What comes before 23? 22. So before Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, is Psalm 22. And there's a lot in Psalm 22. That's where Jesus was beaten. It talked about his stripes and all the things that happened to him. There's, a, there's always a 22 before there's a 23. And boy, we love to read about 23, don't we? But let me tell you one good thing about number 22. There's one good thing about 22. Look what it says in verse number 1. My God, my God. Now listen, here's, here's how bad it is. Why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roar? And did not Jesus say that when he was on the cross of Calvary? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He said that. And then verse number two, he said, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And then the night season, and I'm not, and I'm not silent. So here, here's the thing. Sometimes it seems like God's a thousand miles away. He doesn't hear us about bit, does he? So what do you do in a situation like that? Can you imagine Paul and Silas in prison? Here they are preaching. Here they are doing the will of God. And all of a sudden, pew, I get thrown in prison. Now, has any of us ever been to that point in our life? That we got put in prison? Have we been, uh, let's say, people tell us not to preach anymore and teach anymore in that name? Are they going to arrest us or whatever? Now, sometimes I know some people, I, when I was in Tabernacle Bible College, now I'll be honest, I was afraid I, was, I, didn't, I didn't want to. I had a fear of going downtown Greenville and preaching on a street corner. Now, they did it in the Old Testament, I mean, in the, in the Bible all the time. And so one night, I left Bible college. I went down down Greenville. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to defeat this fear. And I'm going to get out of my car. I'm going to park my car. I'm going to get my Bible, and I'm going to go in a corner, and I'm going to start preaching. And I did. I did. I started preaching. I wanted to, I wanted to get, get rid of that fear of preaching because I believe we ought to be able to preach anywhere we want to. And so I, I did. I just preached on the corner that night. And then I told some boys at our church, my home church, all of a sudden we started preaching downtown Greenville right now. Now let me tell you something. The only thing we did was preach the gospel. We didn't go down there to do things to get locked up. Are y'all with me? I believe I can be against abortion, but I don't have to go to the abortion clinics to get locked up to break the law. And so we did that downtown. Now, there are some boys at Bible College after that. In, in Tabernacle, I talked to Brother Hobart Stevens just a couple of weeks ago. And whenever Brother Tuck was the dean of the Bible College, there's some who went down there, and they went just to get locked up. They even took video cameras and did things so the police would come and harass them, and they could put it on video. So look what the Tabernacle Bible College had to change the rules of that, what they had to do, okay? Now, can you imagine Paul and Silas? They're just following God. They're out here preaching on the street where they're not in the city. And boy, this girl get right here gets saved, and all of a sudden you got, you got the, uh, you got the uh, Lydia. 
she was a seller of purple. She gets saved. Then you have this damsel. She gets saved. Then you have the, uh, then you have the uh, Roman jailer. He gets saved also. So there's the Macedonian miracles, and that's what we see there. But they begin to pray. Now go back to, to uh, Psalm 22. I said all that to say this. Can you imagine where Paul then felt? Can you imagine what Jesus Christ felt when he's talking about? And this Psalm 22 is talking about him. If you look in verse number 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, well, it talks about the Lord hanging on the cross. So Psalm 22 comes for Psalm 23. But here's the great thing about Psalm 22. Even though there's a lot of bad things in there, verse number 3, here's what he said, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Let me, do, let me tell you something. Sometimes you pray your way out of trouble, and there's times you can praise your way out of trouble. Nothing wrong with praising the Lord. Hey, there's nothing wrong with praising the Lord. I think sometimes we pray our way out of trouble. Sometimes we pray. You know what? The, you know what the psalmist said here? He said, God inhabits praise. He said, when you begin to praise his name, not to be seen, but when you praise his name, that's what God, hey, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to pray. He wants us to praise also. So we see that and we see what happens. What happened when all this? If you go back to chapter 16 of Acts, chapter 16. And verse number 30, and brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Now we know you go on down to verse number 34. It says, And when he brought them into this house, he set meat before them and rejoiced believing in God with all his house. Now, there's a prayer of deliverance. Now, I'm going to tell you a real quick story, and I'm, I'm going to be finished. This, 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 this is an amazing story. Jimmy Rose and uh, Bobby Powell, Bobby Powell, they went to Brazil in the 60s when the military ruled down there. They were some of the pioneer missionaries in our area, but they had to study the language school. Well, one of the cities they went to is called Orlandia, like Orlando, Orlandia. Now, Orlandia is about 20 minutes from where I was working at in San Joaquin da Baja, is a city back this way. And, and, and Jimmy Rose and, and Bobby Powell, who died of a brain tumor, if you go to that church there in Orlando now, they got a plaque out there in memory of him that he started a church and how God used him greatly in that little city. And they died of a brain tumor. And whenever they were there preaching, it was on Good Friday. And I've told you the story about Good Friday. Good Friday is a, in Brazil is they take the casket, and they got a body of Jesus laying in there, and they carry them around town with their candles, and they're quoting scripture. Every scripture, and I've sat there and watched them do this and listen to them in our cities. And every, every scripture that they quote from the Bible is refuting what they're doing. They just don't realize it. They're, 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 they're ignorant to the fact of what God tells us to do. And they carry that body around. Well, this particular night on Good Friday, Jimmy Rose and Bobby Powell and some other people were there preaching on the street corner. And while they were preaching on the street corner, here comes that possession by. And the Catholic priest there in that city of Orlandia told the people in that possession, all the people that's carrying their candles around, said, pick up stones and stone them. They shouldn't be here. Stone them. They're, not, they're, they're perverting the gospel. They're, they're going against us. And there's one lady in that, in that possession, and it's what she did. She said, what? Why would our priest tell us to stone people that's preaching the gospel? That's not right. She felt sorry for them. You know what she did? She went to those two guys, asked them to come to her house, and she was going to feed them a meal. I mean, that's what she's going to do. She's going to feed them a meal. You know, I'm telling you, it's an amazing story. She feeds them a meal. They preach it. Her husband's a truck driver, and when he's a truck driver, he, uh, he, he, he wasn't there, and her and her kids were there, and she, she preached, uh, they preached to her, give her the gospel there that night. She feeds them a meal, and then she gets saved by the grace of God. And let me tell you about here. We got, uh, you got uh, Milton. You got Jovito Jr., and then you got uh, Louise, Louis. You got these three brothers. And from that, the dad got saved. They started going to church. The three brothers today are preachers. Isn't that something? From being stoned to that. 
And it, it, that's the prayer of deliverance. That when you pray in the midst of trouble and everything, God begins to deliver and those miracles begin to happen. Milton Nunes came to Bob Jones University, the oldest son. He came to Bob Jones in his English, broken English, won the Preacher Boys contest at Bob Jones. He was their poster child going back to Brazil for the Timothy program. You to go to Bob Jones, you'll understand about the Timothy program. Well, whoever Milton recommended to come up here to Bob Jones to the, to the, uh, to the uh, Mil uh, Timothy program, they, they would accept it. Dr. Bob Jones Jr. and the third, they would accept them as a student under the Timothy program. Jovita Nunes. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing, Jovita. And, and he's, he's the second oldest in there. And uh, Elizabeth, do we do anything with Jovita Nunes? You know who I'm talking about? Yeah. I get checks every month from churches around, and we put them into our church account. And then I go deposit money into his account over in Portugal. Jovita Nunes now is a missionary from Brazil and been over in Portugal longer than I've been at Zion Hill because he left Brazil when I was still living in Brazil. We had a going away thing for him and his family. Been over in Portugal winning the people who founded the country of Brazil through a priest saying, Stone him. <laughs> Stone him. And then, then Ruiz, the youngest boy, he, he became a member of my church there in Brazil. He came and studied at Bob Jones, and now he's a missionary over in the Azor Islands. And, and so I'm just telling you, what God did through that one priest saying, stone them. And that one woman felt sorry for him. So next time you see somebody preaching on the street corner, take them home. Feed them. Feed them. Don't get mad. I'm going to throw rocks at them. Take them home and feed them. And there's no telling what God may do. So I'm just telling you that happened. Then we look in Acts chapter 20, and I'm finished. Acts chapter 20. And uh, we won't go into this one tonight, but this is we, we preach some on it Sunday here at church. But not only the, the prayer of deliverance, this is an early church. This is how they prayed in the early church. In Acts chapter 20, in verse number 36, and when they had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. In other words, what Paul did, he took and prayed a prayer commitment. And I believe that whenever in the church, we should commit ourselves, and pastors should pray for the people to be committed. Now, again, we're not talking about being committed in an insane institute or something like that, but we're committed to the Lord, being committed to him. And that's what Paul did. He prayed for them, prayed for Timothy, prayed for all of them, and, and prayed for Titus. He sent them all out to different places ministering. And so that's what we should pray for, the, the prayer, the example of the prayer of the early church. Now, let's pray tonight and ask the Lord to bless, and Brother Sam's going to come to the piano and uh, pray for these requests that we've heard. Pray for those that are, are sick in the hospital. Pray for the revival over at Brandon Baptist and Tabernacle voting on a new pastor and, and then the, uh, the, the, all the things that we mentioned, those that are sick. Let's pray for them, okay? Now, let's just take a couple minutes. Sam's going to play maybe a couple verses. If you want to uh, stand, we've got couple of minutes here. If you want to spread out, if you want to come down to the altar, you do what you want to do. And let's just take about five minutes not praying for these requests, if you would. Father, we thank you.
bless you. Thank you for coming tonight, and uh, we'll see you. Don't forget Sunday morning, regular time for Sunday school and then preaching, and then we'll be able to Brandon, but Janice and I will be able to make it back before the end of the service, and I pray the Lord bless here and for the uh, food preparation and all that for all that needs to be brought in on Sunday. What do you say, Jason? Dessert, sides, and drinks, right? All right, get those. And, and then praying for the revival on Sunday night as we go over there on Sunday night. If you can make it, we'll really appreciate it. Lord bless you. We'll see you Sunday.